Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here today and we are back in the CBGM for episode 10 of our Michigan Let's Play series of Draft Day Sports College Basketball 21. And well, it's been a cup quite a lot. We've got quite a lot to try and catch up on in this episode really. Um, I think last time we talked we were sort of towards the back end of the, the conference games saying how um, we changed a little bit of the strategy, um, started to tweak some of the player preferences and, and player tendencies to hopefully get our players being a little bit more efficient and well it seems to have worked pretty well for us this season I have to say in, in terms of where we ended up um, we, we went on a, a great tear towards the end um, and we ended up with a 16-4 and four record beating some teams I was surprised honestly to beat and um, the likes of Michigan, Indiana, um, Iowa and we lost to Iowa, sorry. And then, but we managed to beat uh, Minnesota, who were absolutely flying at the beginning of this um, this this season. Really, they were the top dogs. I think they were a top four um, in the nation at one point. Um, but they, we managed to get a really, really good, convincing win against them, which was really, really impressive um, from our perspective. And it showed that hopefully some of our adjustments and tweaking through the season has kind of worked pretty well for us. Our rotations um, getting a little bit more steady we kind of know who we want to play where and who, what matchups we want to play against people and, and really been thinking about that but it means that we've actually had a really really strong strong end to the season and um, you can see here we basically you know went on a, a great tear i mean we, we only lost to northwestern um, and it's probably a, a shock loss to be honest with you and um, northwestern is definitely a team who are, are down the bottom at the minute they've got a bit of a, a rebuilding job to do there and then obviously losing to iowa is you know kind of expected but we managed to have a really, really strong end to the season, and you can see there it's not wasn't just around one player. We kind of had a really good team effort, and we'll probably look at the players in a little bit more detail in a minute. But it meant that when we go to the standings here in terms of the Big Ten, we we managed to come top of the Big Ten in our first season, which is a phenomenal achievement considering some of the teams that are in here. You know, the likes of Iowa State, Minnesota, I've mentioned Iowa, and um, you know, Wisconsin is probably the one that I've surprised the most about being so low and, and struggling this season obviously no can't count out michigan state as well we've got a really talented team as well so fantastic that's absolutely fantastic that we've got to that stage and it means that you know we probably are hopefully now a lock for the national tournament regardless of how the um the the big 10 you know tournament goes conference tournament but it means that also because of we've we've come in as the one seed it means that we've we've got you know, we're immediately straight into that sort of last eight of the Big Ten Conference Tournament. And we, we don't necessarily know who we're going to play at this moment in time. There's still a lot of games to happen before it gets to us. And we'll, we'll probably follow that as we go along, provide a bit of an update there. But, you know, being the one seed, hope, we're going to have hopefully a good home court advantage. We'll be playing a team that's had to go through several games to get there. And we'll, we'll probably talk about it a little bit more when we get to that stage. But... That's a phenomenal achievement because if we go back to our, our dashboard here, you can see our, our actual goal was to win 20 games this year and obviously to have no economic, uh, no academic eligibility, which I think we've got. And then the other thing is just maintain the school prestige and to win the conference tournament and to win the national championship. So we've already achieved, sort of, in my opinion, three of our, our five goals, which is, is fantastic to have in our first season. So, where, where in, in terms of how our teams have formed, what have been the real things that have, have stood us out against some of the other teams in the nation? Well, great thing about Draft Day Sports College Basketball is that it has this insights tab, and they have this in, in the pro game as well, and it's, it's a really good quick snapshot to see what, you, what your team's good at and what your team is, is generally not, not that good at. And you can see immediately, the thing that stands off the page here is that defense rating. We are 13th in defense rating, which is great. I mean, it's, it's not really surprising. We have good defenders all across the court and we have some really good one-on-one -on -one defenders. So, it's, it's you know, we're, we're playing to our strength there. Obviously, on the offense, we're not quite as good there. We, we have to be a little bit more rigid in, in our approach there. Um, as we, we probably talked about in the last couple of episodes, we've got some players who are not great shooters and we've had to really re try and refine those guys down to really kind of at least make them not too much of a liability whilst they might have great defensive ability we want to make sure that at least on the offensive end we're, we're keeping teams honest really so what that means though is because our defense rating is so high our actual net rating is, is phenomenal we are 15th best in net rating in, in the uh, the whole of the nation 
So that that's kind of been the driving force for our for our team this year. We're also very good at blocks, which is a random stat to be honest with you, but you know, it just shows that in terms of our defence, we have good good presence all over the place really. And um, you know, that's definitely our strength that we'll be playing to. And I think that's something we'll hopefully keep through the remaining next couple of seasons because I think that's that's one of the areas that I understand most about this game because it's it's the most similar in my opinion to the pro game the the offensive side is something I I need to really work through because the offensive strategies in this game are so completely different you know you can have Princeton triangle offenses five out offenses it's a little bit more you can change the structure and the schemes a little bit more if you're on a rigid type of offense or if you've got some real star talent you just want them to just basically do what they want you can loosen up a bit whereas in the pro game you're a little bit more refined in the sense that you can sort of play from a sort of grind type offense to a fast paced offense and tweak around that but you can't refine in terms of this how how much of the scheme a team runs because there's not really a scheme as such it's more just in terms of style of play so it's something i'm going to have to learn over the next couple of seasons alongside the recruiting as i've mentioned before sort of the two weaknesses that i have um, in, in this league but in terms of how we've done through the season, obviously to win, you know, to come top in the Big Ten is, is a great start, fantastic start for us to begin with. And let's have a look at some of, how, some of our players and see how they've performed. So we won't spend too much time on the guys who haven't really played much because, you know, there's not a lot to say there. Um, probably the first one up on the block is our shooting guard, Larry Beak, who is, 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 is going to be leaving us this year. He's a senior, so we're not going to have him next year. But, you know, he's had a good season. I think, you know, his shooting numbers are down. I mean, we've had to really refine him again, um, you know, because he's, he's a guy who scores well in the paint. The guy who's a three-point shot is not great, but he takes a lot of mid-range shots, which is, um, which is the concern. And I think what we will do is we'll try and see, you know, try and see if we can at least try and fix him a little bit more um, for ahead of his... You know, hopefully going to the draft and probably being drafted. Um, you can see here his, his, his outside shot is is generally pretty weak, and he need, he'll need to refine that in the pro game. His mid range game is pretty atrocious, but if you get him either on the outside or in the basket, he tends to be pretty efficient. So we really need to try and move that mid range game, in my opinion. I mean, you can kind of live with this outside game that he's got here. You know, give or take. Um, he's that, he's just not a great shooter. But that defensive ability is phenomenal. So, you can see, he's also developed the player types, bucket getter, and defender over the year. So he has developed as well. And his numbers are not not are not great. Um, they're good, but they're not great. Um, in my opinion, I think he's probably gone. If I had have picked him at the beginning of the year, I would have said he's probably a first round pick, a late first round pick. I probably think now that he is probably going to be a borderline second rounder, possible G League type player. And he might get some playing time just because of that defensive ability that he brings. Problem is, he's so undersized, though, at six foot. So I think he may well go undrafted, if I'm honest. Which is a shame because he, he if you're in the right scheme and the pro game, despite being six foot, he could be still be a good player. So in terms of the other guard positions, so we've obviously been playing here Kona mainly at the point guard position. And we've got him again for, for another a couple of seasons. He. He's had an okay season. His shooting is much better than Beak. His mid-range game is better. The outside shot is, is hit and miss um, at times. But, you know, the fact he's shooting 33% from outside, I can kind of live with that. So, for him, I think the main thing about him is, is really is, again, we want to try and reduce this mid-range game and maybe more focus on the outside or more focus on the inside if we can. Because his actual inside game's okay. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult one because I don't want to tweak him too much to maybe outside or too much to inside because the mid-range game is, is okay. So maybe maybe it's a case that we tell him to shoot less threes and more mid-range. So I think we'll try and do that now whilst we're here. So let's talk about your game. I want you to shoot more mid-rangers and shoot for, a, for fewer threes for a month. Okay, he's not happy about that. Okay, okay, he's just not doing that for us, so fine um but yeah overall he's had a good season i mean he's playing out of position um he probably will end up playing out of position again next year 
The positive is that he will have the proficiencies maybe at the beginning of the year, which he doesn't have now, or which he didn't have at the begin. So that's that's a good thing. I mean, I, I can't see this guy ever being drafted as such, but you know he's going to be a solid solid college player for us. So we move on to our small forward, our starting small forward, Scotty Orsler, who um, has actually declared for the draft. I've got an email showing that. Um, if we go to that probably quickly and have a look. Where is it? There we go. So Scotty also has declared for the draft. So he, he will not be with us next year. And I, I was generally surprised I, I surprised about this one. I mean, I, th I thought he would, get, he would give us another year. He is a freshman, so he is a one-and-done player now. And it, to be honest with you, I can see why he has declared. He is just a phenomenal um, defensive player. And he will actually be a pretty solid defensive backcourt player in, 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 in the Pro League. That ball handling though is just a worry. So for me, if I had to guess, I think he might end up being a second round pick again. Just because teams will be put off by that ball handling and his size. He can't really play small forward at the pro level. Um unless you're going ultra small ball. So and also he's not the world's best shooter. I mean we've had to do a lot of work to stop him from shooting that mid range. And you can see even here we haven't really quite fixed it yet. He still is a lot of a, a mid-range player, and he's just not efficient there. So let's let's try and see if we can get him to. Let's have a look. So I probably want him. You can shoot outside more. I mean, you're pretty. I think he's pretty efficient outside. Yeah, thirty-nine percent outside. He's not too bad. So maybe we'll um we'll say shoot shoot uh more threes, and um shoot fewer mid-range jumpers. No, nope, that was it. Thank you, Mr. Osler. So we're not going to have him next year, and we're going to have a gap there because we haven't recruited a small forward. So the important thing now for us is we need to think about these other small forwards we've got and how they've been, been doing this year. So Chris Buchanan has kind of been the main guy who's been coming off the bench for us. He's actually a surprisingly good shooter, and I'd actually be okay with playing him next year despite that terrible defensive ability. Um, he, he could basically be a bit of an Osler light, in my opinion. He, on the opposite end though, he's not going to be defensive focused, he's going to be offensive focused. But he's, his numbers will look pretty good in, in limited minutes he's had. Um, be interested to see how he does next year. Al Johnson's not playing for us. Um, and then if we move to uh, Brian Besker, the, uh, the walk-on has actually been playing some minutes for us, I think. Minimal. But again, he looks like a good all-round player. So maybe maybe he could get more minutes next year. Um, to, to address that issue but we will certainly have a gap at the small forward position going into to next season so moving into the front court uh, we've got Michael Belairs who um, has had an okay season nothing really spectacular his shooting numbers have definitely improved as the season's gone on and you can see here he, he basically needs to live in the post game he's just he's a terrible mid-range shooter he needs to post up more um, let's let's try and probably fix that still so uh, where are you? Let's say I want you to post up more, uh, shoot fewer mid-range jumpers for one month. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, I mean, his numbers are good, 10 and 7. He gets a block, a steal, a assist a game. He's a pretty good just like starter, does a bit of everything. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how he's done. And I'm glad that he's coming back next year because that kind of keeps our front court really strong. And also the, the really good thing is that Bernie Sweetwine is also coming back next year. Um, he's still a junior. Um, and he's just had a great season for us. Um, you can see he's also added the defender and the cleanup on his stats. And he is just continually developing. I think next year will probably be his last season with us, to be honest with you, if he carries on this way. But, you know, a six foot nine efficient guy who can score inside outside, looking like he could become a five star prospect. It, it probably will be his last season next year. He also his shooting numbers are just phenomenal. Um, he he's got really good range. Um, we don't really use him in much in terms of outside game, but he has developed a huge amount throughout the season, and I expect those numbers to go up next season. Generally, comfortably our best player, and glad that he's coming back for next year. And then the only other guy that we've really played any minutes with is Keith Daniel, who I he's been efficient. He does a bit of everything um he's going to have a bit of competition next year because we are bringing in a, a center and graves so that, that front court is going to be quite strong next year and um, there may be an argument maybe that we push belairs into small forward next year granted his range shooting is not great 
but it might be an option to possibly explore and be a bit sort of um, bigger in the front court um, in its small forward as well. So that's how the team is looking. Um, you know, obviously I've, I've mentioned about the recruiting class coming in. We do have Graves coming in, who is just going to basically be a centre power forward for us. And Colin Brown, who might, might possibly, we'll see what his stats are like, might be able to play anywhere from point guard to small forward. So future's looking pretty good for us. Um, we'll keep an eye out for what the transfers are as well. If there's any good transfers in the small forward space, we'll certainly look at that. But obviously the main focus now for us is the conference tournament um, and, and hopefully winning that. So, you know, see here in terms of the poll as well, we are sixth ranked in the nation. So we, we I think we are, we are pretty much a lock now for the national tournament. Not sure what seed will be, but we'll probably come back next time and talk a little bit more about how um, you know who we're going to be playing in the Big Ten Cup tournament. Talk about our, our, our thoughts and strategy for that. But yeah, I think it's been a great season so far. I'm, I'm really happy with how this has gone. We've had to tweak our strategies as we've gone along. Um, but you know we've we've got the right level of performance out of our guys. We've really maximised this roster, and we're starting to see now some of the players who we can build around alongside the, the uh, scholarships we've got coming in next year. You know the likes of Iacona, uh, Belair's Sweetwine are certainly going to be players that we can sort of bring along hopefully continue to develop and really bring us into a strong strong uh, team in the big 10 but always interested to hear your thoughts um how do you think the season's gone for michigan anything you would have tweaked or changed anything in terms of shocks do you you know is, is also going to the draft a shock for you um i was kind of borderline expecting it i guess but i was surprised that he went so early but given he's a freshman kind of makes sense to maximize his value now and when, where do you think he would be drafted? That's always an interesting question. But yeah, interesting to hear your views. Um, we'll talk a little bit more next time about the uh, the Big Ten Conference tournament. Review that, and then we'll we'll move on to the national games and see if how we get in the uh, in the big national tournament and um, see it. who knows. Maybe we can make some noise there. We'll see what happens. But uh, overall, really happy with how the first season for the Michigan Wolverines has gone. Only great bit of building blocks for next season and beyond. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see how we do in the CBGM over the uh, the postseason and into uh, into next season.